On your check ride, you'll be asked to perform slow flight. Slow flight is where we're going to fly the airplane very, very slow, almost to the point where it's going to stall. And the object is to be able to maintain coordination and hold your altitude, and be able to turn to headings and roll out on those headings while you're in this slow flight configuration. In order to set up the slow flight, we have to remember three things first. And we're, our, we used CAS. And CAS stands for clearing turns, altitude consideration, and a safe area. So your clearing turns and your altitude and a safe area. Clearing turns consist of a 90 degree turn in one direction and then back to your original heading. When we are flying straight and level, we can see the area from here all the way over here, but you can't see what's behind you. So the examiner is expecting you to be concerned of any other traffic in the area. It's good if you ask the examiner, will you help me look out for traffic while I clear the area? Whatever heading you're on, just proceed with a 90 degree turn, and now you can see what's behind you in this area, and then go back to your original heading. It doesn't really matter which direction you turn. You may choose to turn in one direction to get away from a populated area, or you may actually consider turning just a 180 degree turn and fly in this direction. But it's important that you stay in a safe area. We don't want to be over a TV antenna or a population or a mountainous area or anything like that. Um, so your clearing turn, you start there. The altitude for any of your airwork maneuvers, that means slow flight, power off stalls, power on stalls, steep turns, must all be completed no lower than 1,500 feet AGL. In this area, the field elevation is roughly 1,000 feet. So we can complete the maneuver no lower than 2,500 feet. It's best if you start at 3,000 or 3,500 in case during your transition into slow flight you lose a little bit of altitude, you'll still be in a safe, uh, safe altitude. And then I already uh, spoke about the safe area, is that um, you need to make sure that there's no other traffic, uh, no population below you or anything like that. Now, when we transition into slow flight, it's very important that you keep your attention outside the aircraft, but also we need to monitor our flight instruments as well. In normal cruise flight, our airspeed indicator is probably around 100, but we're going to fly the airplane very, very slow. We're going to fly the airplane to your airspeed indicator is almost to where the airplane would stall. And you can also refer to this as um, your VMC, that's minimum controllable airspeed. And how we're going to transition is first we're going to reduce or pull your carburetor heat on, and then we're going to reduce the throttle. And you may want to reduce the throttle to around 17, 15 or 1700 RPMs to allow the airplane to slow down. You may consider enriching the mixture a little bit to help keep your engine cool because we're going to be pitched up and have a lot of power in there so you're working your engine very hard and we need to make sure that we keep the engine cool. So just a consideration, you may choose to enrich in your mixture just a little bit. Now once you pull your carburetor heat out and you pull your throttle out, the airplane is going to want to twist to the right just a little bit and you're supposed to hold your heading so you're going to need to apply a little bit of left rudder as you reduce the throttle to keep the airplane on the same heading. And as the airplane slows down, and we see the airspeed transition through this white arc, that's your flap arc. So that's where it's safe to put your flaps down. And we're going to put all of our flaps down as the airplane's slowing down into the white arc. And then, in order to maintain our altitude, if we started at 3,500, in order to maintain our altitude, we're going to have to increase the throttle to keep us at our altitude. Now we're going to be flying very slow and we're going to have full flaps in, and we're going to have a lot of power in there. Sometimes, especially on hot days when the air is really thin, the airplane will not even be able to maintain its altitude. It'll start to sink. So if the airplane starts to sink, you can say, well, is there any other power trapped anywhere in this engine? Yes, there is. Your carburetor heat is stealing a little bit of power from you. So you may also have to push the carburetor heat in. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But the amount of power we add is to maintain our altitude. How we're going to control our airspeed is by pitch. So if we start going too slow and the airplane almost stalls, we need to reduce our pitch attitude to maintain our airspeed. If our airspeed starts going too fast, we need to pitch up a little bit in order to slow the plane back down. 
and our throttle is going to control our altitude. If we start to descend, we need more power. If we start to climb, if we have too much power in there, we need to reduce power. Now this may seem a little odd, because normally if you're flying straight and level and you want to go faster, you add more power and the plane goes faster. But in this situation, even if we add more power, the plane won't go faster, it'll only start to climb, because we are, known, we are what is known as the back side of the power curve, or the area of reverse command. And what they mean by this, the back side of the power curve, or the area of reverse command, is what is predominantly controlling our airspeed and what's predominantly controlling our altitude. Our airspeed is controlled by the pitch in this configuration, and the power is controlling our altitude. So remember that we're on the back side of the power curve, or the area of reverse command. Now the reason that we even practice this, one reason of course is you have to prove that you can do this on your check ride, but the other reason is because this is how we come in for a landing. We come in very, very slow with full flap configuration. And we want to make sure while we're up high that you understand how to control the airplane and to manipulate it so when you do this close uh, to the surface in the traffic pattern, you'll be safe. Now there's one other point I want to add. Because we're in this configuration, we're pitched up and we have power, we're going to have P factor. Remember earlier that P factor was whenever we pitch the aircraft up, how my right descending blade takes a bigger bite out of the air? Well, we're going to have P factor because even though we're not climbing, we are pitched up with power. So once you've slowed the plane down and you put your flaps in there and you have to add the power back in to hold your altitude, the plane is going to want to yaw to the left. So therefore, you'll have to use your right foot, your right rudder, to hold the plane straight. That means that if we want to do a turn to the right, you're going to, it's going to require extra right rudder to maintain coordination to turn to the right. If we want to make a turn to the left, the plane already wants to yaw to the left on its own, so if you simply release that right rudder you were holding and bank the ailerons a little bit, the plane will be happy to stay coordinated in the left turn. The examiner may also ask you to set up a descent. Now remember, what makes the airplane descend in this configuration is the power. So if the examiner asks you to descend at, for example, 500 feet per minute, and we had originally put the power back in to hold our altitude, if we want to descend from level to a 500 foot rate descent, we really need to pull our power all the way back to probably somewhere between 15 or 1700 RPMs to allow the airplane to descend. Now, if you pull the power back, so if we reduce the power, what do you think the nose of the airplane is going to want to do? Descend. That's correct. But if we let the airplane descend, we're going to increase our airspeed. And we're supposed to maintain that slow airspeed. So simultaneously, while you reduce the power to set up the descent, you're also going to have to pull a little bit of back pressure and retrim the airplane so it stays in that same pitch-up fashion and just descends on its own. Um, while maintaining that slow airspeed.